Hello, my crafty friends. Today we're studying, um, we're still, we're continuing the prophecies about Jesus's character out of the book, all the messianic prophecies of the Bible. And the, um, the character, the character trait that we're studying today is spotlessness. Um, in Bible usage, to be without spot implies a person without any bodily defect or stains or marks and goes back to the Levitical law under which the lambs offered in sacrifice to God had to be without any bodily blemish. And that's from um, Exodus 12, verse 5. Your lamb shall be unblemished, an, an unblemished male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or the goats. And then um, some other scriptures using this same um, idea of without blemish or without spot is Numbers 19 verses 1 and 2. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, This is the statute of the law which the Lord has commanded, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel that they bring you an unblemished red heifer which in which is no defect and on which a yoke has never been placed. And then Job 11 verses 13 through 16 says, If you would direct your heart right and spread out your hand to him, if iniquity is in your hand, put it far away and do not, do not let wickedness dwell in your tents. Then indeed you could lift up your face without moral defect or without spot or without blemish. And you would be steadfast and not fear for you would forget your trouble as the waters that have passed by, you would remember it. And then um, Song of Solomon, chapter four, 4, verse 7 says, You are altogether beautiful, my darling. There is no blemish in you. I'm going to pause just a moment. Sorry about that. And then um, Hebrews 9, verses 11 through 14 says, But when Christ appeared as high priest of the good things to come, he entered through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands. That is to say, not of this creation. And through the and not through the blood of goats and calves, but through his own blood. He entered the holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling, those who have been defiled, sanctify for the cleansing of the flesh. How much more will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, cleanse your conscience from the dead works to serve the living God. So the, um, the sacrifices that they gave in the Old Testament made them acceptable to serve God um, for another year. And he's saying, you know, that Jesus himself um, will make you acceptable to serve God. Um, but he's, he makes... He makes your conscience, you know, free because you, you're you not, um, those dead works are gone and now you're going to serve the living God. And then 1 Peter 1, 18 through 21 says, knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile way of life inherited before your forefathers, but with precious blood, as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. For he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but has appeared in these last times for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that you, ha your faith and hope are in God. So Jesus is our spotless lamb. And... Um, Instead of having to have a sacrifice every year over and over and over again, Jesus sacrificed himself once, once for, every, for all of our sins. One sacrifice for all. And then 2 Peter uh, chapter 3, verses 8 through 18 says, But do not let this one fact es escape your notice, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, 
not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. So it sounds like he's saying that, you know, the Lord, the reason the Lord hasn't come back yet, the reason his second coming hasn't occurred is because he's waiting. He's waiting and giving as many people time to repent as will. And that's, um, that's hope for all of us, especially when we know people who um, still haven't accepted him. And so we can, we can pray that they will because God is still waiting. And then it continues. Sorry about that. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with its roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its works will be burned up. So he's saying, you know, God's being patient. He's waiting. He's waiting. But it's going to happen. The time is going to come. Since all these things are being destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you be in holy conduct and godliness? looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. But according to his promise, we are looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwell. Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, spotless and blameless, and regard the patience of the Lord as salvation, just as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, wrote to you, as also in all of his letters, speaking to in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which the untaught and unstable distort, as they do also the rest of the scriptures to their own destruction. You therefore, beloved, Knowing this beforehand, be on guard so that you're not carried away by the error of unprincipled men and fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus is the perfect Savior, well able to remove our evil stains because of his own spotlessness. He left the world in spite of all he had to endure without a stain on his character. When his church is complete and glorified, it will be without spot or wrinkle or any such thing without any blemish. Presently, we are spotted and blemished, but it is assur assuring to know that his blood can wash away all the stains. And then in Ephesians 5, 25 through 27, it says, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her, so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. So Jesus gave himself to give us the chance to be considered holy and blameless. Bless God, there is a radical cure for the life or garment spotted by the world, flesh, and by the devil. It is found at Calvary, where the spotless Son of God died. And um, I just realized I hadn't decided... which verse we're going to use. Um... I think I'm going to use the Song of Solomon verse because I think this is how Jesus sees us. Um, because of his sacrifice, he sees us as altogether beautiful with no blemish. So we're going to use that as our verse. Next week, we're going to talk about how Jesus was innocent. His innocency is the word that he uses here. I've never heard the word innocency before. I've just heard, you know, having innocence or being innocent. But
Okay, so there's our verse. And this is the page we're going to be um, creating on today. And let me zoom in just a little bit while we're doing this part. And it's got a really pale pink stripe. And I've got this, I've got this bag, gift bag that was not made very well, or I put something too heavy in it or something. Anyway, it tore there and it tore over here. So I decided I'm going to use this um, and put it down on my page. And it's not wanting to come off here very easy, so I'm going to have to try to be careful. I didn't think it was going to be this difficult. Hmm. It's like this front was just glued on to the bag. Well, that'll at least make it, oh no, make it thin. Okay, maybe we got enough. Maybe we got enough. I really think. <clears throat> okay, well, this is appropriate, isn't it? We got a piece of bag here that is definitely blemished. And um, we're going to try to make something beautiful out of it. <laughs> Okay. I don't think I want Okay. I am not sure what I want actually. I don't really care about this. So, um I think I'm going to just cut that off. And I know you're thinking, well, that's going to look stupid. <laughs> but um, I'm also going to, that's a shame to mess up that butterfly, but we're going to just go ahead and do it. Okay, we're going to put this on there. Just like that. Let's go ahead and straighten that up a little bit. Okay, I think that's really pretty. So we're going to go ahead and glue it down, and then I'm going to cover up this over here with some more flowers or something. We will see. But I think that's pretty, and we're going to put it down. Even though it is blemished and spotted, we're going to use it anyway. Just like God uses us anyway. Let's put this on a piece of paper over here where we can not worry about if we go off the edges because I want it to glue down really good. Okay, come back.
those blemishes are still there just like ours are still here but God doesn't see them because he sees Jesus okay let me do some Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do a little fussy cutting right here. And we'll see if we can That looks pretty good, I think. I think that's going to be good. like that <clears throat> up here we still have you know part that's not um let's see if this will Okay, so we now have a butterfly that's flying down as this one's flying up and then this one's flying out. So that's kind of cool. Okay, let's glue that little bit down there. Okay. So we kind of made a patchwork, but I think it's pretty. From a distance, it doesn't look patchworky, does it? It looks nice. Okay. I think, um, you know, God gives us second chances, and I think uh, butterflies are a good um, a good example of a second chance. You know, that little caterpillar gets a second chance and becomes something even more beautiful, and that's kind of what we do. We get a second chance to be something more beautiful than we 
can be on our own. Okay, I need to trim this. There we go. And then here's our verse. I like that, but I think I am going to go ahead and um, ink around the edges and ink around the verse. Next week is Easter. It seems like a fitting time to be discussing Jesus' innocence. Because it's his innocence that allowed him to rise from the dead and, and be our sacrifice and grant us grace. If he had sinned in his life, he wouldn't have been innocent and he wouldn't have been able to to be that sacrifice for us. We wouldn't have Easter to celebrate. I don't, I like to call it Resurrection Day rather than Easter because um, that's what it's all about. It's about the resurrection. So we're studying about the sacrifice of the lamb today and we'll study about his innocence next week. He was the spotless lamb that none of us could be. So today, remember, because of Jesus, because of Jesus, because of his spotlessness, because of his sacrifice, because of the grace he offers, when God looks at you, he says, you are altogether beautiful, my darling, and there is no blemish in you. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Because we know how blemished we are in our own power. God bless you and have a great day. Bye-bye.